The CBS Radio Mystery Theater presents... Come in. Welcome. I'm E.G. Marshall. Do you believe in ghosts? Or do you consider it a healthy attitude to scoff at visitors from another world and people who believe in them? Well, whatever you're feeling, believe me, they are nothing to mess around with. They can start out as fantasy and end up being very real. And I think you'll agree after listening to this story. Corey, you know there's no such thing as a ghost. Oh, yes, there is, Doctor. I kept seeing my brother Robert's ghost after he died. Oh, but he didn't want to hurt me. Mother is... is different. What do you mean, different? She wants me dead. Now, why would she want you dead? Because I deserve to be. I killed her. Our mystery drama, The Impossible is True, was written especially for the Mystery Theater by Ian Martin and stars Anne Williams... I'll be back shortly with Act One. For all the delights of being wealthy, there are drawbacks. One of them is the kind of isolation it thrusts on those who exist in it. A second is the frequent haunting theme of tragedy that seems to run through the lives of the super-wealthy. The Fulton Sterrets would qualify on both counts. Certainly, the great old mansion built by the first Fulton Sterrett generations ago is isolated enough. And we're about to hear another of the many tragedies in the long line of their history. Listen. I don't know, Miss Sterrett. It, it sounded like a gunshot from your father's study. Oh, no. Please, God, not him. Where's my brother, Philip? If Philip was taking a nap before dinner. I was on my way in to wake him. Well, get him quickly. Hurry, Jared. Y- yes, yes, Miss Sterrett. Linda. Linda, are you there? Yes, Miss Corey. I was in the pantry and I thought I heard... Oh, never mind what you thought. Get to the study. Yes, Miss. Oh, hurry, hurry. I, I can't open the door. It's locked. Oh, knock on it. Knock. Yes, Miss. But... Mr. Starrett, are you all right? Daddy? Daddy? What is it, sis? What happened? Oh, didn't you hear? It sounded like a shot. A shot? Oh, good Lord, let's get the door open. Oh, it's locked from the inside. Are you sure Dad's in there? He must be. If it's locked, Master Starrett. Of course. Let me, let me see if I can... I, I can't budge. Oh, what are we going to do, Daddy? Easy, sis. We don't know anything's happening well, yet. I know. I know it has something dreadful. Just like everything else. Oh, there's a curse on us. it. Miss Spenner, help her. Yes, sir. Where's Jareth? I thought he was right behind me. I saw him come downstairs, but I don't know where he went. I need him to help me with this door. Father? Father, can you hear me? No, he can't hear you. He's dead. Just as we're all going to be dead. All the stairs. Knock it off, Corey. Miss Corey, you keep on like this. You'll put yourself back in the hospital. Well, I don't care where I am. I just want to be dead. I can't stand Jared, where have you been? I I saw the door was locked. I thought perhaps you might need this, sir. What is it? Uh, It's a crowbar. (laughs) Now, with your permission, I I could force the lock. Yes, yes, open it. If uh, if you would all just uh, stand aside, please. I'm, yeah. I'm afraid there will be some damage. I'll help. Uh, yeah, now, sir, pull with me as hard as you can. It, it's coming. Pull! Oh, 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 oh no! I, I couldn't have. Daddy! Daddy! Oh. Uh, are the police still here? Oh, thank heavens they're gone. All those questions. They questioned everyone. When? I... I didn't see them. Well, while you were 
Well, you were busy with Dr. Gentry and your sister upstairs. Gentry? Has, has he left yet? Uh, no, 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 sir. He's, he's still upstairs with Miss Steady. What do they ask you, Jarrett? Oh, just about what you'd expect, sir. Did I hear the shot? Uh, where was I at that moment? Uh, uh, was the door securely locked? And how long, how long it was before we broke it down and discovered that, uh, that Mr. Steady had taken his life? You believe he committed suicide? What else? What else, Master Sterrett? A locked room. A man we all knew was in the profoundest of depressions since the madam met a terrible death. What else would one think? I... I don't know. The way the police questioned me, you'd think there was some... some kind of foul play. Or, or you're, you're imagining things. How could there be? The windows were locked from the inside. No one could have come from outside. And no one on the inside would have harmed a hair in the master's head. Mm. As what reason could we have? We all so depended upon him. Yes, of course. Where's Linda? Miss Benner. She was making arrangements with Cook to reheat your dinner. Oh, when... I couldn't eat anything. Uh, oh, yes, come in. Uh, Mr. Sterrett, may I see you for a few minutes? Well, of course, Doctor. How's Corey? Uh, I've sedated her. She's sound asleep. Oh. Will you need me for anything more, sir? Oh, no, Jareth. You and Cook and the rest of the staff. Go ahead with dinner. As well, we have all eaten, sir. It's quite late, you know. It's past midnight. <laughs> so it is. Well, then, tell everybody to go to bed. Any special orders for tomorrow? Oh, no, no. You can wake me as usual, Will. Take it from there. Yes, sir. Good night, sir. Sheriff. Really too good to be true. The perfect butler. Right out of P.G. Wodehouse, except he was born in Brooklyn. <laughs> My father once told me that. Well, he won't be telling me anything else. Um, maybe you could use something to settle you down. Oh, no thanks. I'll leave the pill popping to my sister. I shouldn't have said that. I would have been asking you about it anyway. Why ask me? Anything about the Sterrett family medical history ought to be in your father's files. I want to know about Corey. Well, I'm concerned. She's shattered at the moment. After seeing Dad, the way he was, no wonder. Of course. So, uh, may I ask you a few questions, Mr. Sterrett? <laughs> Let's make it, Phil. We're not so far apart in age, Dr. Gentry. Oh, okay, Phil. And uh, my name is um, Mark, if you prefer. <laughs> I, I knew your sister once, you know, when I was in medical school... She was just starting college. It was just before your older brother crashed his plane. I, I'd known him our senior year in college. That summer, our paths crossed again, and, well, he introduced me to Corey. Oh, I didn't know you'd ever met any of the family. Yes, I remember her as being one of the most radiantly healthy young women I'd ever met, physically and mentally. A little difficult to remember Corey that way. She ever really was. I know her brother's death was a terrible shock to her, but... Uh... Let's get it all on the table, Mark. It's going to be there anyway. Robert's death was a shocker for all of us, but... We weathered it, Dad, me. But, uh, Corey can't take any emotional traumas. I'm... I'm afraid she's the one who took after Mother. I know Robert didn't. And, uh, well, I hope I was spared. I don't know what you mean. As long as I've been old enough to remember, my mother was certifiably mad as a hatter. Huh. That's why she was such a recluse. You know, she was always hearing voices, seeing things. She's the one who started the whole business about Robert's ghosts prowling the upstairs hall after he died. If you ask me, I think that's what really killed her. A ghost? She, she thought she saw something tripped and fell all the way downstairs. It broke her neck. Yes, but I, I thought... <laughs> I uh, understood from my father... That, that she'd been drinking, oh. Sure, that too. But that was always around it. It wasn't a cause, it was a cover-up. Mom just couldn't cope. She was a real schizophrenic. Well, even if that were true, it's not hereditary. But the tendency is... Look, Mark, do you think I like 
talking about my twin sister like this? I guess that's what Dad's trouble was. And you think that's why he took his life? No question about it, that. And seeing that Corey was going down the same road as Mother, even he had to admit it after she came home again this time. She'd been away? Yeah, ever since, well, right after Robert. Corey has been chasing into some far country or another, and huh, I don't mean only traveling. Oh, drugs? Well, no, just just pills, but she's, she's sick, Mark. Sick. I just hope that this is a quiet night. Did you really knock her out? Uh, no, no, just light sedation. But enough to hold her till morning if no one disturbs her. None of us will. But I can't answer for her private demons or, or the ghosts that haunt her poor, twisted mind. Ah! Ah! Corey! Ah! Dear heaven, my poor darling, what is it? She... It's... Mother standing there, moving towards me. Her finger crooked, beckoning to me. Beckoning... Linda, uh, uh, what is it? What happened? I fell asleep and, and, and Miss Corey somehow got out of the room and I, I don't know. She, she she says she saw something. Corey, what did you see? Tell me. It, Corey, it's Phil. Mother. Mother. Standing there. Middle of the hall. Oh, Corey, baby, there was no one there. It, it couldn't have been Mother. You, I mean, you know, Mother... Mom is... I know. She's dead. And it's all my fault. Oh. That's why she's beckoning to me. She wants me to be dead. And I want to be dead, too. <laughs> dead. 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 What have we got here? A young woman who, within a very few years has lost a revered older brother and both of her parents. All of their deaths shockingly unexpected and violent. Small wonder she's on the verge of a nervous breakdown. But to the point of actually seeing ghosts, are they only fantasies of the mind or could they possibly be real? I'll return shortly with Act Two. apparent sensory experience of something that does not exist outside the mind. Sense perception not caused by external stimuli. That's the dictionary definition of an hallucination. An apparition, on the other hand, is a specter or phantom, a ghostly appearance, a wraith. Now, the question here is, which hallucination? Or apparition. In other words, is the specter of Corey's mother a product of her unbalanced mind, or could it just possibly be an external and actual spiritual emanation? Let's go back to our story and find out. Good morning, Mark. I, uh, I saw your car coming up the driveway. Morning, how's Corey? Ah, uh, I mean, uh, your sister. Oh, she's upstairs. Linda Venner, the, uh, the housekeeper's with her. We finally got her to sleep. Well, I'd, I'd like to get upstairs and, and check the patient. Fine. Are, uh, are these the steps your mother... Mm-hmm. Pure marble. Guaranteed to break anyone's neck falling down. <laughs> yes, sir. Sorry, it's a silly thing for me to have brought up. I I apologize. Corey's room's to the right. Oh, yes, I remember. Uh, before we go in, may I ask a few more questions? You're the doctor. Where did Corey think she saw this ghost? Right here, the head of the stairs. Uh -huh. and, and where was your sister? Coming from her room. How did she wake up? Oh, Mark, I don't know. She was so incoherent until we got her back to sleep. I, I couldn't get anything out of her except this idiocy about Mother's ghost. Well, how did you get her back to sleep? Huh? Well, I, I gave her one of the pills you left. Uh, you look pretty beat. Did you get any sleep? Some hopeless, and I'll manage. 
But it's going to be quite a day. Funeral arrangements, fighting off the press and all the rest. How about the police? Oh, no, they are all through, thank the Lord. She's still asleep, Linda? Yes, Mr. Starrett. Oh, Dr. Gentry, shall I wake her? No, 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 let her be. You'd better get some sleep yourself, Linda. I'll be all right. You are taking the rest of the morning off. That's an order. Oh, who is that? What is it, sir? Uh, old Wakeston. Dad's lawyer, just driving up. I'd better go downstairs and see him. Then I'll stay with Miss Corey. Uh, no need, Miss Fenner. I'll be here for a while. Yeah, it won't take me long to get rid of Wakeston. Come on, Linda. I'll be... I'll be right back, Mark. I'm in no hurry. Miss Starrett. Uh, Corey. Corey, can you hear me? <laughs> Miss Starrett, I, I want you just to try to wake up. This this is the doctor. Who? Uh, Dr. Gentry. No. No. Dr. Gentry is an old man. Yes, I, I'm his son, Mark. Mark? <sighs> I knew a boy once named Mark. Yes, one summer. Not so long ago. Oh, a hundred years ago. A hundred million years before. <laughs> uh, doesn't matter. Dead. Corey, I am Mark. And I'm not dead. <laughs> well, not you, Mark. Me. Corey's dead. Oh, no. No, she's not. Well, the one you knew. Died that summer, a million years ago. The one that's left will soon be dead, too. Not if I can help it. Corey, what happened last night? I saw my mother's ghost. No, Corey. Now, you know there's no such thing as a ghost. Oh, yes, there is. I kept seeing my brother's ghost after he died, but, but Robert didn't want to hurt me. Mother is a. Uh, different. What do you mean, different? She wants me dead. Now, why would she want you dead? Because I deserve to be. I killed her. You what? I killed my mother. But why? Tell me about it, Corey. I'd like to. I want to. I want to tell someone to ask to be forgiven. But who would forgive me? Who would forgive me? Maybe I would, Corey. And why don't you try? Why, why don't you... Why don't you tell me all about it? Do you have any idea why your mother should have been an alcoholic? She once told me it was because she couldn't have any more children after me and Phil... So what? Isn't three enough? Are you sure about the alcohol? You don't think your mother could have been... What, insane? Oh, no. Well, that's Phil's idea. He'd have believed anything to make excuses for the fact he never could get her to love him as much as he wanted her to. She didn't love any of you? Oh. Oh, I, th I think she loved Robert and me in her own kind of way. Robert especially. She really freaked out when he died. So did I. That's what caused the whole trouble. But when she couldn't stop drinking, even at the funeral, that's when I decided I didn't care about anything anymore. I was going to get out and sow a few wild oats of my own. So you took off? Oh, like a rocket. Blew my mind for two years before I came to my senses. And came back to do what I, I should have done those two years. And a lot of years before that. What's that? Help her. Help mother find a way to some happiness. Be, be kind of a seeing eye dog for her. Well, I was too late to help save her. And that's why you say you killed her. Well, if I'd been here... But your brother was there. Phil, your father was here. Don't they have to shoulder some of the blame? I can't use my father's guilt to duck my own. And what was your father guilty of? Well, leave it alone, Mark. It's family business. I'm not opening any more closets to drag out skeletons. I'm afraid I'd find still worse ones there. And what about Phil? Isn't he to blame, too? Phil is Phil. 
I don't know what he thinks or where he lives in his mind. He has his laboratory and his photograph studio and whatever else he dabbles in. I don't know. We went our separate ways too long ago for me to bother. He loves you very much, Corey. Does he? I suppose I love him, too. Some way. I have to, don't I? With twins, after all. Well, I don't know that there's any law that says you have to, but... Oh, come on, Mark. Leave it alone and... And get out of here. I'm a doctor. And you are my patient. I have to know how to treat you. There is no treatment. The patient is already moribund or mad or doomed. No one can save me. I can. And I intend to. How? How is Miss Sterrett, Doctor? Oh, Jareth. Uh, she's asleep again for the moment. Uh, where is Mr. Sterrett? Uh, he's still with the lawyer. Uh, she shouldn't be left alone. It's away from this house she should be. Oh? Uh, Too many dark shadows here, Dr. Gentry, for any girl as sensitive and as bruised as poor little Miss Corey. Uh, Jareth, come away from the door a moment. I'd like to ask you some questions. Well, I'm not sure I could answer them. Can't or won't? It might be a little bit of both, sir, but try me. All right. Now, you've observed Corey all her life. Do you think she is mad? Oh, no, sir. Upset, shaken, torn apart, but uh, no, no, not mad. And then why do you think that she sees ghosts? Dr. Gentry, after Master Robert uh, lost his life, we were all seeing ghosts of him. He, he was a remarkable young man. Everybody loved, admired him exceedingly. And last night? The ghost of Mrs. Sterrett? I, 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 don't, I don't know about that. I think. I, I don't know what to think. Tell me something. Was Mrs. Sterrett an alcoholic? No, sir. Uh, my father didn't think so either. He thought she drank to ease some burden, to dull her mind. What do you think, Jared? Well, it is not my place to... Well, I uh... think maybe it is. You love Mrs. Corey, don't you? Take her away from here. Please. No, no, I can't. She wouldn't go. No, I have to prove something to her first. What is that, Doctor? That she's only lost her way and not her reason. Now, first thing to do is get rid of the ghosts. If I could only be here when she thinks she sees one, but... I'm sure Philip Sterrett would be glad to have yours, I guess. Yes, I'm sure he would, but somehow I'd rather no one knew I was here. I need every weapon I can to fight the supernatural or such vivid hallucinations. A surprise could be my most valuable one. Well, what would you hope to accomplish, Doctor? I think if I could be here at the very moment Corey thought she saw this specter, I could convince her that it was nothing worse than a bad dream. You could heal her, you... And make her well again. I could make her find her way back to the girl I fell in love with. The girl I'm still in love with after all these years. I can help you. How? This is my afternoon off, sir. I I usually drive to the village for dinner, sometimes to the city. Now, I can arrange to meet you wherever you say, and if you'll excuse the expression, uh, smuggle you back into the house. But where can I hide? Trust a butler, sir. I know every nook and cranny of this house. All right, Jared. All right. We'll do it. And let's both pray that tonight the ghost will walk again. She's seeing the ghost. Shh, shh. 
She may be sleepwalking. Don't wait. I see it too. Whatever it is, Jareth. Creator Day, standing right by the top of the stairs. Is that Mrs. Starrett? Oh, merciful Lord, Dr. Gentry. It's the madam. It's Mrs. Starrett to the life. Now, how can you argue with that? When three people see the same ghost, it must be real. Or, at the very least, a visible presence. Unless, naturally, all three are under the influence of hallucinatory drugs. Or, demented. Which seems quite as unlikely as the presence of the ghost. I'm sorry to leave you in suspense, but it will only be a short while till I return with a solution to this... Sherlock Holmes once said, Watson, if logic rules out all the possibilities and only the impossible remains, then the impossible must be true. Or words to that effect. Do you subscribe to that dictum? If you do, then of course you believe in ghosts. But if you are of a more skeptical turn of mind, how do you explain away the apparition of a woman long and certainly dead, seen by no less than three pairs of eyes? You may doubt the evidence of Corey Sterritz, but surely not that of Jareth, the butler, and a young and healthy man like Mark Gentry. Is there an answer? Let's find out. She's going to fall. Corey, look out. All right, Mother. If you want me dead, I will. Yes, I've got her. I've got her. <laughs> what happened to the ghost? You, you, you walked right through her, Dr. Gentry. Through her? Where is it now? It has disappeared, sir. Just like that. One moment she was floating on the air and then, puff, she went out just like a candle. Never mind that now. Help me get Corey back to her room. Possible, Linda. How could Mark Gentry be in his house? I don't know, Phil, but he was there with Jareth. Just in time to catch her before she toppled down the stairs. Oh, thank heaven for that. It would have solved everything for us if she'd broken her neck just like the old woman. No. There's been enough killing. I told you that after our father, there wouldn't be any more. It would have been enough to have Corey declared incompetent and committed then. We would have had all the money. We? You'd have controlled it. No more than you control me, my dear illegitimate sister. No more illegitimate than you, brother. That's a secret we better keep to ourselves. We sink or swim together. This is no time to quarrel. How do we get out of this? You're the brain. You started all this. You tell me. Linda, are you sure that they both saw the hologram as well as Corey? The doctor even walked right through it. I didn't kill the light on time. No. Lousy bright. Nothing went right. Where are they now? They carried Corey into the bedroom. She's not... No such luck. Just passed out. The panel. I've got to slide it back in place over the hologram. i get rid of this hologram. At least, that'll give us some time. I wonder how much Mark Gentry suspects. Or knows. He can't know anything yet. But give him time to start asking questions and it won't take long. How can we stop him? There's only one way, little brother. Kill him. What? Mark? Oh, we'd never get away with it. We'd better if we want all those lovely millions. You've killed enough for them already. What's one more? I didn't kill Robert for the money. I know. You blew him and his plane to smithereens because you were jealous that he was your father's favorite. I used to laugh to myself to think how much extra relish you would have taken in planting that bomb in his plane if you'd known the real truth. Why didn't you tell me then? Mother was still alive. She would have ripped me to the bone if I'd opened my mouth. You didn't know her. I never knew my own mother till after she was dead. You wouldn't have wanted to know. You were too spoiled playing the little prince and dreaming of the empire that was soon going to fall into your hands. All this could have been avoided if that... I hadn't decided to change his will. It could have been avoided if you hadn't lost your head and clubbed him to death. I didn't club him to death. I only hit him once. Didn't kill him. Huh? That's why I had to use a shotgun. Well, I will say it made a convincing suicide with the secret passage to escape by. 
<laughs> the loyal husband grieving for his poor departed wife. That's a laugh. When the only bed he'd shared since Corey was conceived with his housekeeper. How? How could Mother have settled for that all these years? She was a very proud and stubborn woman. When she made a bargain, she stuck to it. When she found out my mother was carrying me, Mrs. Sterrett was desperate. After I was born, our father took my mother in as housekeeper and guaranteed her and me a pension for life. To shut her up. To have her here as his mistress. Mother should have made him get a divorce and marry her. Come off it, Phil. He's a Sterrett. They don't allow that kind of scandal. Why do you think the old lady kept her mouth shut? She knew what was going on. That's why I killed her. For all those years of trying to find love from someone I realize now must must have hated me. Yes, they really made good use of you, all right. You were a great bargain. A ready-made son and heir for a man whose wife, the old Dr. Gentry, had warned was having her last child. Presto, change and Corey had a twin brother. With no one the wiser except me, mother, the Sterrets, and two faithful retainers. Old Dr. Gentry and Jareth. A pity. It looks now as if the circle might be widened. Oh, there's no way we can get rid of Mark, Linda. Oh, I think there might be. How? Huh? Corey. What are you talking about? What is Dr. Gentry doing here in the middle of the night? Well, that's what I'd like to know. Here's how we explain it to the police. The, the police? Listen, tonight, Corey got completely out of hand. We sent Jareth for Dr. Gentry. When he came, he recommended that she be institutionalized. And Corey went stark, raving mad. Somehow, she'd gotten the gun your father used to keep by his bed. And before any of us could stop her, she fired at her imaginary persecutor, Dr. Gentry, killing him instantly. How do we get Corey to go along with this little drama? We don't. You're the one that shoots Gentry. And what does Corey say to the police? Or is she supposed to be so paranoid they don't believe her? They won't hear anything from her. You see, after she shot the doctor, she ran from the bedroom. We tried to follow, but at the top of the stairs, she turned to fire back at us. The bullets will be found in the wainscoting. And she turned, she lost her footing to plunge headlong down the curving length of stairs, just as her mother did. She was found, poor broken bird, crumpled in a pitiful heap at the foot of them, the gun still clutched in her dead hand. Mm. My work might just work only... Only what? What do we do about Jareth? You don't think he'd sit still for all this? Oh, I think he might. You can buy him off? Not just with money. What? Family loyalty? A little of that, too. But most of all, something else. What? Me. You... <laughs> you don't mean that up mock English robot. Never underestimate the power of the sex drive, little brother. <laughs> Jared has a yen for you. <laughs> for a long while. But he didn't come to full flower till Mother was out of the way. He was afraid of her. Oh, Pete Sams. You leave Jared to me. Now stop gaping like a fish. Come on. We have things to do. Let me go. Can't you understand? She's calling Corey, for me. Corey, wake up. It's Mark. Your mother is dead. Oh, she came back for me. I know you don't believe in ghosts, but you must listen to me. Miss Corey, you must listen. I know she's there because I saw her myself. Who, who are you? Who is it? Don't you recognize me? Jared. Oh, of course I do, but... But you saw Mother's ghost? As plain as day, floating in the air, and so did Dr. Gentry. He did? Yes, I did. Ask him, Miss Corey. Did you? I did. But, but that doesn't change anything. It just means Mother's ghost is realer than ever. And she can't rest until no, wait, I... Wait, wait a minute. What, what is it, Dr. Gentry? Jareth, you said floating in air. Yes, that's just the way she was. But that was the only feeling of movement. For the rest, she was frozen. Not a gesture or expression or even the blink of an eyelid. Just like... Just like a... Like a what, sir? A, a picture. A photograph. So, some kind of illusion. Uh, a trick. Corey, how did you know 
The apparition was there. What what made you go out into the hall? Well, I heard her voice calling me. No, no, you thought you heard it in your, in your sleep. No, no, I was awake. And still you heard it? Yes. But where? Uh, in my head. Far away, but somehow near, like... Like it was under the pillow, but, but filling the room. Sit up, Corey. Jareth, help her. Yes, sir. What is it? I want to look under the mattress for a moment. The head of the bed. Oh, I wish you'd just leave me alone. No, 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 miss. You, you just listen to Dr. Gentry. Yes, I thought so. Look at this. What? That's a radio speaker. Yes, there's your ghostly voice, all part of the trick to make you think you were seeing your mother's ghost. It sounded like mother. I mean, it was a woman... Who? Yes, I'll tell you who, Miss Corey. That Linda Venner. You don't know it, but she is an evil woman. And your brother, Philip, is he's even worse. Now, now that I've remembered the secret passage... What secret passage, Darren? It runs from your father's study to his bedroom. It was discovered years ago, long before you were born. But Mr. Stannard told me it had been closed up. I'd forgotten all about it. Yes, but it must be open again. That's how Mr. Philip must have... Must have what, Jareth? For your own sake, Jareth, you'd better not say any more. What's the gun for, Philip? The better to kill you with, Mark. Are you out of your mind? The pot calls the kettle black. Shoot him, Philip. What for? Well, we could say trespassing, but we have a better idea. Oh, Mr. Philip, think isn't one murder... Shut up, Jareth, dear. Stay out of this. I promise you I'll make it worth your while. I see it all now. You killed Daddy. I hadn't much choice. He was changing his will, leaving all that lovely money to you. I couldn't have that. If he left it to me, you can have all of it. You didn't have to try to frighten me to death. I would have enjoyed it better that way. How did you like my hologram? Hologram? Photographer's dream. I've been messing with him for years. Even had mother. Well, the woman I thought was my mother down to my studio just before her death and made a hologram of her. Blown up, it made a very... Effective ghost, don't you think? Stop talking, Phil, and let's get it over with. Oh, let me finish. That hologram is pure magic. From a distance, the image is invisible, but approach close enough and it looms up through the shadows till at last you have an eerie, fantastic, three-dimensional figure that seems to float in air. Shut up, Phil. If you don't do it, I will. You, you couldn't, Linda. You're the one who's sick, Phil. I suspected so from the first moment I set foot in the house. But you can be helped. Now, just give me the gun. I'm not sick. I'll give you the gun, all right. Here's your prescription, Medler. This will be one disease you can't cure. That's oh. 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 oh, it's all right, Doctor. I, I have the gun. And I didn't... I didn't mean to... Keep away from me. Don't, don't let him get away. Give me the gun. Now hold it, Phil. He'll never take me. No one ever will. I... I can be you. What is it, Mark? Look. It's mother. It wasn't an illusion. No, get away from me. Oh. I realize I made you. But I never made you. You were made to haunt me all my life. Now, for my daughter's sake, I unmake you. I shall destroy you just as you and your father destroyed me. No, no. Try to run if you can. I'll hunt you down for what you tried to do to my baby. My way. No, die as I did. down the staircase just just as I did to her. <laughs> Poetic justice. Corey? I'm here, Phil. It is all yours. The way it would have been. Where's where's Linda? She's dead, Phil. Your bullet killed her. Bullet meant for you, <laughs> Just as well. I... I killed enough for nothing. You killed father? Yeah. And used... the secret passage that... my real mother used to sneak to his bed by night. That's why I set up that hologram. But why did you panic and, and, and fall downstairs at your own illusion? That... 
Oh, that was no illusion when Linda and I came from the hidden passage. I destroyed the hologram. You mean that was really Mother's ghost? You don't know how real it was. She's calling me now. Mark? Yes, he's dead. God help him, wherever he is. For no one else ever will. Remember I suggested in the beginning that ghosts were nothing to mess around with? You know, for a long while there, I thought perhaps that the impeccable Sherlock Holmes was wrong for once. But I owe him apologies. It seems that the impossible was the only answer, after all. This was one ghost that may have started out as fantasy, but ended up being very, very real. I'll be back shortly. Hologram is the very newest thing in photography, and to view one is an eerie experience not to be forgotten. The subject projects itself right off the print, actually floats in air. Stranger yet, as you move right or left, the ghostly floating image changes perspective just as faithfully as a real person would. To see one is not to believe it. The impossible has at last come true. Our cast included Anne Williams, Michael Wager, Paul Hecht, Catherine Byers, and Earl Hammond. The entire production was under the direction of Hyman Brown. This is E.G. Marshall inviting you to return to our mystery theater for another adventure in the macabre. Until next time, pleasant dreams.